And good evening, everyone. Thank you very much all for being here this evening on this uh, Friday. It's 8 p.m. here in Poland, and I have my guest, Rafael Aita. I believe I've said that correctly, Rafael? Yes, it's okay. No, thank you very much. And I'm really grateful that you are here with me today to have this discussion with me. I, I genuinely enjoyed our meeting and our first discussion. The um, I was very impressed with your knowledge of history and philosophy and um, where we had these these common interests. And um, yeah, would you mind if I just do a quick introduction of you and then I'll leave you to, to do the rest of the introduction? Of course, go ahead. Okay, so so hello guys, <laughs> good to see you all. Um, yeah, so we've got Tom, we've got Gina, we've got Nicodemus, Yaya, um, Terry, very welcome. We've got Mick, Bruce and others. Um, thanks all for being here. Um, so guys, Rafael Aita has a successful YouTube channel of his own. Please check the description. I've put links to all of his social media. He's an author of more than one book. <laughs> Maybe one day I should get around to writing a book. That's something I will ask him about. <clears throat> and he discusses the history of Peru, where, which is where he is based. And also uh, one of his interests is the history of the Catholic Church during the Spanish conquest. And he loves to address misconceptions about history. And he's had this love of history since he was a teenager. And he's wanted to address things that weren't taught in school. And um, also he's become very well known. Actually, let me just switch over to the main screen so that I can. Um, so let me see. Um, let me share, give me one second. I haven't used StreamYard in a very long time. So that one, I'm going to share my entire screen and boom. And this is Rafael Aita, very good looking man, as you can <laughs> see. <laughs> I'm very lucky to have this charming man as my guest. And he is also the persona of Captain Capitan Peru. So um, yeah, Rafael, over to you now that I've done a brief introduction. And welcome, Villainous. Good to see you. Over to you, Rafael. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, uh, as you have said, uh, um, uh, I have uh, social network channels in YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, where I talk about history. Although I am an uh, engineer, I studied engineering uh, um, some years ago. I graduated as an engineer, had an MBA, but uh, I also realized that uh, the story that uh, I have been uh, taught in school was not accurate, no? And uh, I realized this uh, when I began writing novels because I, I love to write uh, even since school. And um, in one moment, I began to write uh, historical novels. And uh, so I needed to to do research in uh, bibliography, books written uh, by historians, uh, much more than I was reached on, uh, on the university or on the school. And okay. then I realized that uh, it was a completely different history that I was taught, where uh, it was uh, the the history that I was taught was full of black legends uh, against the Spain, uh, against the church. It was very common to hear, for example, that uh, thousands or millions of uh, natives were judged or executed by the Inquisition, by the Spaniard Inquisition. And then uh, I found uh, that uh, there was no natural, no native, that was judged by Inquisition because they were protected by the Indian laws. So it was right. a great surprise for me. I think it, this was the first post that I did in Facebook where I said, hey, do you remember that everything, uh, everybody has heard about the, the millions of Indians that died because of the church and the Spanish Inquisition? Look, there was no no one <laughs> that was that were judged by the Inquisition because they were protected. 
they were considered, they were in the, the process of conversion, so they only a Christian uh, fully, uh, 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 let's say, uh, with all the knowledge of Christianity, can be uh, can be judged by Inquisition. So the Indians didn't apply to that, and uh, then I was I began to do more research, and uh, and then uh, well, also this information began to spread. Uh, the channel became bigger until today, where uh, I began to write more books about this. I became very interested in uh, uh, separating the political ideology that is uh, in our history than uh, the real facts. So um, uh, after that, I also realized that in, re in reality, we do not uh, do history. We're doing philosophy. The history that uh, we are used to read or to teach is, mm -hmm. in fact, according to different philosophical schools or oh. philosophical authors. A that certain has gender or a certain ideology would different influence... How we approach it. No? I, I, I don't know if, if, if we should call it agenda or, or simply the approach of the author. Uh, for, for example, um, uh, it's very useful, uh, it's very common to forget that one, uh, uh, how, uh, how can I call it? Uh, uh, one thing that Marx did is to become a humanities into science yes um no? sociology was the first shall we say sociology, yes. socialist science that and, uh, made went to university as a description of history no in so, fact it's a form of theology it's a form of of description of the world and the world's origins so it's really it's sociology is a form of theology but a scientific and, theology and, and that's and that's why many uh as sociologists or anthropologists are very near to the left, but uh, what other yeah, options do they... It was an atheist they... form. It was an atheist form of yes. science. It was an atheist form of science. So uh, it, 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 that's the materialistic, uh, um, historical, uh, materialism historico, historic materialist, yeah, please, please historic say a materialism. few words in Spanish. I have many Spanish yes, members in my audience, so feel free to... Uh, Yes, yeah, some, um, some, uh, I don't know, uh, palabras técnicas, some technical words escape to my translation. So, historical materialism is a Marxist method to study history, and it's approved by the academy, by the universities. So, it's part uh, of our curriculum. And uh, what option do they have? No. So, uh, that's the reason that. Uh, philosophy is so important to history and also to know which uh, philosophy school is uh, behind uh, the history that we're reading. That's a very interesting point. That's all. I have a question. You said that there are certain things that were taught and certain things that were not taught. Can you give me an indication or for the audience, what are the kinds of things that were withheld by the historians critical data that seem to maybe sway information in one direction or another, what, what kind of bias did you find and what difference did it make when you fill in these blanks that were left out? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, when we are, when we hear or we read uh, about uh, um, American history or the conquest history, we are used to learn that when the Spaniards came, they uh, killed every uh, governor, uh, uh, maybe the Aztecs or the Incas, they were eradicated, they were exterminated no? by, by the Spaniards. But then uh, you go to museums and you find uh, some pictures like, like the one that I'm uh, sharing at this moment, uh, hold on. Um, 
and they think it's you, okay yeah let me share that yes i'm just going to do that now there we go at the bottom no there it is yes yeah. yes you can see it over there you can find this picture this is an inca and this is an inca that is holding a cross in his right hand and uh, of course um, well. in peru many of us has heard that the last Inca was Atahualpa, and he was killed by Pizarro, and uh, yes. that ended the, the the lineage of the Incas. But but then you go to the museum and you find this guy that is dressed as an Inca, has the name of the Inca, and has a cross in his right hand, and you say where did this guy came from? Wow, and I am really, shocked. Crazy. Yes, of course. No, and, and, and you find that uh, the Incas were not killed by the Spaniards. In fact, they uh, um, much of them survived the conquest and uh, they received uh, uh, titles and they have privileges and they dressed as nobles. For example, this uh, other guy that also I'm sharing yeah, okay. at this moment. Takes a moment to share up on my side. Yes. So once you share, I'll... Okay, there we go. This is also an Inca. <laughs> no, he has uh, the, the Inca crown over his head. He was named uh, Chihuantopa Inca, and uh, he's dressed uh, as a noble. He had uh, a lot of power, a lot of privilege. So you, you find uh, that uh, there is a... Uh, <laughs> S somebody must be lying <laughs> no? or or the picture or my history teacher and it's more more, more probable that my history teacher lied to all of us and because nice. the picture is from the 17th century and uh, and, and it's not falsificated and it's uh, 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 it's a fact that's over there and uh, uh, and nobody talks about them we have 300 years of uh, Inca history that nobody talks about us. And not only in Peru, also in the United States. For example, uh, there's also uh, some facts that uh, are not well known, especially with uh, the Western movies. Because when we watch a Western movie, we see the Indians with feathers and talking like la, 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 la. And, uh, yep, I remember those days. I did that when I was a kid. Cowboys, of and course. Indians. Yes, and and we and they are portrayed as savages that were living in the middle of nothing. But then, when we read history, we realize that those Indians, in fact, lived for three hundred years in the uh, vice, Roy, vice kingdom of New Spain. They were Catholics, they were baptized, and they wow. spoke Spanish. And that's an that's example of uh, Indian Geronimo. Uh, recently, they have found uh, the uh, baptism act of Indian Geronimo. He was baptized as a Catholic. Are you serious? He, yes. Of course. Oh my golly. Geronimo really? was baptized as Catholic and he oh spoke Spanish. <laughs> That's something that nobody says, nobody knows. Wow. And we Are think you... that Geronimo is a savage from the, the wastelands that uh, lived uh, in the middle of nothing and, uh, and talked an, a language like, oh, and he was a pagan that. Uh, uh, he worshipped the sun or a totem or whatever. And no, he was baptized as Catholic and spoke Spanish. Wow. You know, we get our history. Okay, lots of modern people, and me as a child, obviously, we, we got our history from the movies. And the movies, obviously, Hollywood isn't known exactly for, shall we say, factual accuracy. Which is scary because we have this idea of history that comes from entertainment that is... False. That is, wow. I had no idea. Yes, yes, of course. And uh, well, the movies help a lot, but we, in in the schools, nobody tells a different story. 
and nobody dips go deeper on uh, uh, to to question the movies or to say okay that that this isn't like that and uh, uh, this is the real story so uh, there we see that there is a lot of black legend about uh, about 300 years of uh, spanish empire that uh, we think that it was uh, fully slavery and exploitation uh, and if and, wow. and it wasn't like that so we need to reinvestigate and rewrite history um uh, I, I am sharing uh, also my uh, oh. uh, my screen uh, i i only found uh, uh, a Spanish uh, yeah. website. Pedro about... Jr. says, and and thank you. I had the um, Dirty Windshield series. Thank you very much for for joining up. I really appreciate that. And Pedro says these history teachers always trying to make Christian figures of history not Christians, like the founding fathers. And yes, I need to do something on the founding fathers. I put together a series. I need to discuss how so Christian they were, and in the culture as well, which has been erased from history. But that is true. Let me show this. Yeah. El Indio oh, Jerónimo era católico y hablaba español. So hopefully I didn't butcher that. Wow. No, so we have uh, here, well, uh, maybe you can find it on uh, in, in English, but uh, there are a lot of articles about uh, the true story of uh, Jerónimo. Wow. I am shocked. I did not know that, you know, and because I had this preconceived idea of reality, obviously I never thought to go and have another look. I assumed I knew. Wow. So. Then uh, uh, we can also explore about uh, the Hispanic background of uh, the United States, no? Because... Can we pause there for a moment? I am interested. Can we just pause on that? So... So just remind me the Spanish background of the United States. I just want to ask you one or two questions from the article about you. Okay, okay. Just yes. so we can learn more about you, your your purpose, your mission. You can speak about that. And then I then I want to get back to this. But I am I did not know. And this if the history of South America is false, and I know from my studies on the Spanish Inquisition in Europe mm -hmm. that, that is yes. false. I mean, that is like ninety-nine percent false. <laughs> it just it, it is frightening how much we've been given false, biased, shall we say, also anti-Christian history. Of course, so, yes. So let me let me share my screen again. Um, <clears throat> um, let me go back to sharing. Uh, yeah, I'm still figuring out. I've only used this once for myself, but I, I have not used it with a guest. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so so this is Capitan Peru, dashing figure, real, you know. Um, so, yeah, so you began, so you've explained this, that you investigated the details that are not taught in schools, and that you, you obviously want to inspire the youth to love the history, to know the history, and to know the truth. Is that correct? Yes, 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 of course. And you are known on social networks. You love to speak about history, as we are witnessing right now right, with little known but very interesting passages from history. Um, tell us about your book, The Secret of Lost, Lost Inca. Um, yes. What, what made you write this and what is it about so that the audience can learn more? And I'll try and find the book. Right yes, uh, it, this book is um, also a historical novel. It's uh, uh, half fantasy and, far, and half real history because it's in the present they are look they are looking for the inheritors of the inca empire no so they they want to crown uh, again the the the, uh, the heir of the inca but uh, they find that this uh, heir uh, this descendant of the incas is also descendant of francisco pizarro conqueror of peru because also a very little known fact is that Francisco Pizarro married the sister of Atahualpa, Atahualpa's sister. 
So, uh, and uh, the, right this is the, the union of the two empires because uh, the uh, conqueror of Peru uh, had a child with uh, the daughter of Huayna Capac, of the Inca. And uh, it, this, this child was the legitimate successor uh, to Spain and also to the Incas because it has the inheritance of both. So um, uh, it also tells uh, a story that uh, it is uh, not known, that is this uh, fusion in blood because the in in in, in uh, the Incas and uh, the Aztecs and uh, the Indian nobility remained as nobles through the empire, the Spanish Empire. They they were given uh, noble titles that uh, we have uh, these titles uh, also the the shields until today, for example, I'm going to share some of them. Here we can see in the, here we can see, no, in the, in the picture, these were the, the, the blason, escudo. Ayúdame con la traducción. I don't know if it is a shield, no, but uh, this is the the nobility that were given to the Indians, to the noble Indians, to the Incas, to the Aztecs by Spain. So they were recognized as okay. nobility. Um, this is a very difficult uh, concept to grasp because oh, coat of arms. Thank you, Gina. The coat yeah. of arms. <laughs> okay, coat of arms. Great. Here, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a very difficult concept to grasp because um, uh, England did not do that. So we are not used to, to, to watch Indian nobility. But in the Spanish America, they were considered as nobles. They lived like nobles. Uh, not like in North America, that they were um, they they didn't have any title and uh, and uh, they were not integrated to the thirteen colonies. In the, in this in the in the Spanish America, they were integrated. They uh, mixed their blood uh, in mixed marriages. They were recognized as nobles, and uh, in fact. Most of the, and they were not slaves because slavery was forbidden in, mm. uh, in the Spanish America for naturals. And that's why in the United States, or where, in the, in the British colonies, the slaves, the slaves that, uh, were, that uh, were, uh, that ran out from the British colonies, yeah go to Florida to okay. be free men. And today in Florida, we have a, a celebration I'm going to, to show. I think that it's Port Moses, uh, where they do a celebration from these free slaves that uh, arrived to Florida, to Spanish Florida, right. uh, to, to, become, uh, to become free men. And uh, that's uh, another difference between uh, the, the Spanish Empire and the British Empire. Um, Salvador Martin says the great great grandson of Geronimo is Alfonso Borrego. Si, sí, well Alfonso Borrego. I, yes. I, I know him. He's uh, famous now, and, and, and he talks about this. Okay, that I, I did not know. Is there anything that, that is of interest about Alfonso Borrego that, that we should know? That you would, uh, you would know? He, de he defends the true he defends the true story of his ancestor, and uh, he's the one uh, that uh, is uh, communicating to everybody 
that uh, his ancestor was Catholic and uh, spoke Spanish, wow. and uh, he li and and that the Indians lived uh, much more comfortable during the in the Spanish Empire in New Mexico than in the 19th century when the states arrived, wow. and uh, that's that's why we have uh, this picture. Okay, maybe uh, uh, I can I can share it now. Sure. Okay, this one that uh, also explains a lot. Yeah, it just takes a moment before it appears on my side, so I'm just waiting for it. Yes. Okay. Can you zoom in a little bit? This is Spanish America for oh, wow. at least 200 years. And uh, uh, that's why uh united states has a uh, spanish background until today we found the people in texas in florida in california that are very rooted to the spanish language and, and also uh, that means therefore the catholic tradition I would and they follow the catholic tradition well until today in texas they are very conservative about that because and, this is interesting uh -huh. because you're always told of the puritan tradition and not about the catholic tradition in america which is very uh, another one of these little gaps in history and they have more years of catholic tradition than uh, puritan tradition oh wow and the this puritans is the, as far as i can discern are somewhat gnostic yes this is the map of New Spain. So uh, Mexicans say that uh, they never crossed the border. The border crossed them <laughs> because <laughs> they were established in those territories from uh, 16th century until uh, 18th, 19th century, where the border moved over them. And that's why most of those territories are very Hispanic, Catholic, conservative. Wow. This is history I did not know. I wasn't even aware of a, of a hint of this. And, 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 How and, does this escape us? And you see, that's, uh, I, that's why I say that uh, there's a lot of history that is not shown to us, that is hidden from us. Wow. I mean, I, I talk about history on my channel um, and I talk to, I show people how certain facts are, are left out and therefore you get a false perspective on history. Like I did a series of eight talks on Darwin. I spent months researching Charles Darwin and you learn about how Darwin had these beautiful butterfly collections and you know, and, and that's your story of Darwin. But once you actually learn about Darwin, how Darwin loved to murder small animals, he took his hammer and he killed thousands of birds by hitting them in the head. He used to he used to take rocks and throw animals to death. He used to just kill them because he enjoyed it. And you learn this. He sounded like a crazy psychopath. And you learn about his idea, how he loved death. And, and you start to learn dark things about this man that are very disturbing in fact and these facts are just completely forgotten and um so you learn a view of history that and then you realize that the people who adopted his ideas were like hitler and the nazis you learn that world war one was a darwinian war fought for darwinian reasons they believed that murdering all these people would bring a better world and so history has been so manipulated that we really don't have the full perspective and and also Dar darwinian science was anti-christian and all of these movements seem to want to wipe out the, the the traces of christianity they all seem to oppose that this uh, is uh, another example of uh, what i was talking about they are african americans in florida that uh, they are uh, commemorating their their arrival to florida uh, and uh, you'll find uh, that they are carrying a flag that is the same that I have in my t-shirt. Yeah. That's the cross of St. Andrew. And okay. 
that was the Spanish, the Spanish, the, the, the flag from the Spanish Empire. And uh, uh, that's the flag of Florida today. Well, a little uh, transformed, uh, a little changed, but uh, it is the basis of the the Florida flag. I need to look up the flag of Florida suddenly. Yes. Uh, okay. We are, we're going Let's to look up the flag of actually the whole one. Yeah. Since the whole one, I've got this here. I'll. Uh... Uh, the flag of Florida. Let's let's have a look. And wow, <laughs> there's your flag, the one you just yes, showed us. Yes, it's this one. Nothing to do with Christian Spain at all. <laughs> really, no connection. You see, because the flag this, of the Kingdom of Florida, the Kingdom. Oh my the gosh, Kingdom of Florida, of course, <laughs> because the Spanish Empire was the empire of kingdoms the kingdom of peru the kingdom of castilla the kingdom of naples the kingdom of sicilia the kingdom of new spain mexico the, and those all of them were kingdoms and that's why they have their nobility their local native nobility wow this is this is a complete revision of history by adding pieces that we were not taught but the information, the facts are there. We have it in the flags. We have it in our museums, in, in, in our pictures. We have it everywhere. But wow. it, it has been hidden to, to speak a total different history. Wow, that is so shocking to me. I, I have one. There's a couple of questions I have in this. Hour. Just two more questions mm -hmm. that I have from here. Um, and thank you, Yaya, for the donation. Very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I've had many of my subscribers ask me to um, translate some of what I do into Spanish. And just for the subscribers, um, I've had some some really great support the last three months um, to the channel financially. And it's allowed me to obviously produce a great deal more content. I've had to teach myself how to do content faster. I'm using AI to do these voices, but I'm paying for professional voiceovers by a the, the best AI software in the world for voices. And um, and thank you for the for, to my subscribers and members for that. But also, I've discovered now that I can apparently do translations into other languages. Um, this does cost, um, but I will be I will try to do some of this. And um, but just saying thank you to the members. I, I will look at options and. Um, you know, I will look at the, the budgets required for some of this. I can develop this in other languages. Spanish seems to be the most requested language. And then, of course, I also get Malaysian, oddly enough, which is the most populous Muslim country. Um, so I will look at that. But I think Spanish is something I can start with to to, to translate some of that content. Um, uh, yeah. OK, so back to, to where we were, because this is mm -hmm. very interesting. And perhaps also uh, Capitan Peru, you know, um, would be great if, um, you yeah, if I can point people at your at your YouTube as well, and just to have people get information in Spanish, you know, which is a very, very common language in the world to learn more about this. Um, so 600 you, million, 600 million of Spanish. That's speaking. more people than are needed to move the heaviest piano. Or to move the house. <laughs> so yes. yeah, I think that's a good number. Um, so this question was, what do you think are the biggest mistakes when teaching history? So you said teaching history is disconnected from the global context, and this is a mistake. For example, it is necessary to understand the independence of Latin American countries. Let me just scroll over here. Okay, I have to make it smaller again. <clears throat> it is necessary to understand the independence of Latin American countries in light of what was happening in Europe previously and of Napoleon's intervention in Spain, and history must be taught as a real story, not rotely. Can you tell me more about this, what you meant by this? Yes, uh, that uh, um, we, when when we are uh, taught about uh, the independence in Peru, in Mexico, in Colombia, in Argentina, they told us that uh, we uh, rebelled against the great oppressive empire and we achieved uh, our liberty. But in fact, when you look the beginning of the 19th century period in Spain and uh, I'm talking about 1808 and 1814 
that period is called the Spanish Independence War. <laughs> okay. And because they, yeah, flag of Ireland also. <laughs> wow, and, wow, wow. And uh, look for the first flag of Peru. So this is a modified <laughs> version of it here. Yes, that's that's the first flag of Peru, and it's also inspired in the cross of Saint Andrew. And uh, because it was very difficult to manufacture in the, in that time, they changed it to the bars, but the red and white remained, and that's why the flag of Peru is red and white. Okay. Yeah, so sorry to interrupt you. So, Someone mentioned okay. Tell Napoleon in, 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 in 1808, Napoleon invaded Spain. So every uh, everybody was uh, uh, fighting Napoleon to go out Spain. And Napoleon um, installed, I don't know if it's the right word, that his brother as a king crowned his brother uh, Jose Bonaparte as a king of as the king of Spain and the uh, Spaniards rejected the French king so in uh, in our countries in Latin America or Hispanic America Spanish America um, all the people said if in Spain they are rejecting the French king, we should also do the same and they began to do uh, autonomous governments uh, because they considered that in spain there was no king and oh, those wow. governments began into the independence movements and that's why in mexico the first uh, how can I say for a primer grito de independencia, first yell of independence, <laughs> first shouting of independence, first proclamation, let's say. The first okay, proclamation, okay. it's I think it's it sounds better than Spanish the first. as well. There are Spanish viewers that would, would be fine with a little bit of Spanish as well. Yes, the first proclamation of independence was made by a priest, Curidalgo. Uh that is today he's the father of Mexico, like George Washington from the US. Okay. Curidalgo, El Curidalgo, the priest Hidalgo, is from Mexico. And he finished his speech saying, Long live Ferdinand the Seventh. That was the king, the truly king of Spain. Okay. So if you're going to independence from Spain, why you finish your speech saying, Long live. Ferdinand the Seventh, King of Spain, <laughs> because uh, that movement began rejecting the French king. All right. Okay, this is something I also did not realize. And when you say history must be taught as a real story, not rotely, tell me more about about your thoughts. Because we are taught and edulcorated, manipulated, tergiversated. I don't know how to say it. Uh, story, history, we are taught uh, very romantized in the, I, I, I think, cartoonly romantized, where we divide always, you, you, you can see that we're always dividing history between uh, a fight between good and evil. No. Oh, the British were the evil, and George Washington was good, and the Spaniards were the evil, and uh, the liberators were good. Right. And and, and that's a, a very simplistic, cartoonish way of studying history, but also mm -hmm. very Hegelian, no? Thesis and antithesis. You're right. Hegelian was also not quite a Gnostic, but he was a hermetic. And so he Hegel did. was the basis for, for Marx. Marx. And Marx and Hegel was the also, basis for Marx. And Marx was, well, Marx was atheistic satanic as well as gnostic which is a crazy mixture and uh, we that's and uh, we have his famous quote that uh, social classes fight is the motor of 
for history, and we learn history like that. Be that true. is the Marxist view. That is actually the Marxist. It's the Marxist view. It's the Marxist view. Oppressor yeah. and oppressed. <laughs> that, no? he, he spoke of dialectical materialism, and then the, the the motor of history was the clash. I mean, yes, this is, this is taken from Marx. That is insane. It's taken from Marx. So the the Spaniards were the oppressors, the evil, the the evil empire. Now we are going to liberate from that evil oppress opp oppression. Wow. So that's a very Marxist dichotomic Hegelian view that wow. that it's not real, and that's why I say that uh, history is uh, analyzed, is taught from that point of view. Yeah. But thank you, Matthew Velasquez. I'm really grateful. Thank you very much for the support. Very, very kind of you. Wow. I, I am, you know, I, I know about this, but just to hear it from someone else and to learn more about it is, it's disturbing to see that this has, this, this, this toxic ideology has infected schools, has infected universities and, and has affected our knowledge of the world. Really and uh, in fact, what we are never told is that uh, we, as uh, Spanish Americans, Hispanic Americans, or even uh, the people that are hearing uh, from Texas, California, Florida, New Mexico, they were never told that we were part of the first globalization. Tell me more about that. Well, I recommend everybody to watch a, a, a documental that is called Spain, the first globalization. Okay. And they, Spain, uh, the first they, globalization, a documentary. Yes, a documentary, yes. And they explain that uh, uh, the Spanish empire was the first globalization with one language, one coin, and uh, that ruled the world uh, from uh, Alaska to Patagonia and uh, Philippines to Spain. So if you had the, the uh, Real de Ocho, no? uh, Real of Eight, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> the, the, the Spanish coin, Real de Ocho, if you had... Uh, that uh, money and you spoke spanish you can uh, do commerce from alaska to the land of fire all through the continent and from philippines in asia polynesia and madrid in europe it was the first globalization and that coin was done also in our countries, because Peru, Lima, Cusco, Mexico were places where that coin was made. So it was like the dollar can be printed by Mexico, by Peru, by Philippines, by Madrid. Imagine their economies. In fact, the inspiration of the dollar is that coin? Oh wow! I have read something like, okay, very. You know, it's crazy that it's like we have to go back to school to relearn all of this history. I I, I don't know if uh, you you have uh, you know the history. Where does the symbol of the dollar come? No, the the, the S from the Dutch word the... taler. Or the German word. That, that's the word, the tallard. Yeah, the the tallard. tallard, that it was the peso. That was uh, how in the real or peso de ocho was called. But the symbol, the S with the two bars. Ah. Where does the okay. symbol come from? I uh, That's uh, uh, another information that I have here. That uh, it has the inspiration in the Spanish coin. Yeah. So Just briefly, I on this um, documentary, it says it addresses the least known aspects of the historical Hispanic monarchy known as the Spanish Empire. And it says here it features the presence of 39 historians, 
and all of which try the always uphill battle of debunking the Spanish black legend. And that black yes. legend, just by the way, was very first created by Protestants in Germany, England, and Holland, amongst others. Netherlands, yes, of course. Yes, the Netherlands uh, were big. William, William, William of Orange and Theodore of Bray were the ones that used the, uh, yeah. the print uh, to... Printing press. Yes. Yeah, when Here, I do, when I get around to the the Spanish Inquisition, the the collusion between these empires to smear and lie is shocking. I mean, the the political corruption that went into creating this this nation, this this Europe wide propaganda is shocking. But these are Christians lying through their teeth. Uh, Pedro Junior asks, "What is the Black Legend?" I'll share that. I'll share your screen in a moment. What is the black yes. legend? Black legend is manipulating uh, or lying or cutting parts of history only to have a bad image of an empire or a group of people. Yeah, specifically though, it relates at least in terms of the Spanish Inquisition. It relates yes. to the idea that the Spanish. The Catholic Church in Spain murdered 50 million people during the Spanish Inquisition. 50 million. And I mean, there probably weren't even 50 million people in Europe, in all of Europe at the time, but somehow the Catholic Church killed them all. And so the black legend was designed to conjure up images of torture, of, of confessions extracted under extreme torture, limbs being amputated, people being bored into by sores and nails and it was designed to, to demonize the catholic church and it was extremely effective okay let me just take that away so you've got this um yes this that's the the region of the symbol they it, it, they are the bars that ah. uh, come from the from the from the symbol of spain until today you see the hercules bar the hercules columns ah the, the real colors the third coin so this is this coin it says, well, what does it say on the coin? It says ultra que unum. Ultra que unum means we both are one. That means that uh, both sides of the hemisphere, both continents are one empire. Ultra que unum. Ah, so there was no sort of slave and oh. dichotomy. Slavery was prohibit but was forbidden was banned for uh, because of the loss of indians the indian loss okay and there's also another word in the pillars plus ultra. plus ultra plus yes ultra. plus ultra come from uh, uh, a roman uh, myth that says non plus ultra from the Hercules columns, it, it means don't go more, don't 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 go beyond. No, non plus ultra means don't go beyond this place. Don't go beyond the Hercules columns because uh, it's unknown territory. When uh, Christopher Columbus arrived to America, they change that phrase for plus ultra. That means go beyond the Hercules columns. We are we are were the ones that uh, go beyond yeah. this place. Yes. Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Actually, you know, I was watching a talk recently on history and it spoke of the idea of there be dragons on all these ancient maps. There were yes. there be dragons, there be monsters. And this was on maps. And actually, the, the, the historian I was reading was saying that this actually was something that was very common because people were very nationalistic and anything beyond their borders outside of their realm was was monstrous, was evil. And there was yes. that us versus them idea. Whereas this is a very different view of the world. Yes. Actually, and, this is and, in a complete contradiction. To, or and, and, uh, and it is based on the uh, Catholic view. And I am going to explain why. Interesting. Because Catholic means universal. Ah. Yes. The word Catholic. Means... You know what? You know what communism means. 
Universal. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the, it's, the parallel is there for a reason. Yes. Only, it's also universal. Yes, of course. Um, Catholic means universal. And uh, we received the um, mandato. How can I say mandato? The order. We received the order to spread the the good news until the end of the world. We have right. that in the gospel, no? Go and tell the good news until the end of the world. And love thy neighbor, don't see him as a monster. Yes, and that's why um, Apostle James is buried in the, earth, in the end of the world, literally. Because in Spain, the, uh, the far, uh, uh, far extreme from of Spain, that is Com um, Compostela, no, it's uh, it's uh, the farthest place in the known world. Yes. There is. I haven't been there. I've been I've been about three hundred kilometers from there, a few hours, a couple of hours drive from there. Yes. There's um, a place I've been on portions of the of in Spain on the walk, Santiago de Compostela, the the, the route of uh -huh. Saint James. I've, I've yes, I've been on portions of that. I've been to see it's beautiful. It's amazing. Look at what is commenting, cheeky, shaky. I think Santiago de Compostela. Uh, no, the one previous. Um, 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 where, where, where? Santiago de Compostela near the Finisterre. Okay. Okay, Finisterre means end of the land. Finis and oh, Finisterre. Fin Finisterre, where the land ends. Ah. Because that was the place where there was nothing beyond. And they right. went to that place to bury Apostle James, to go ah. until the last place of the earth. Because okay, that well, was the I commandment. Need to go find this now. So. Santiago de Compostela. Yes, um, it is at the far end from uh, from Spain. Okay, so here I am. I'm just going to share my screen for a moment. Okay, so that is Santiago. That is Spain. So yes, of yes. course. Then of course you had that said um, the the voyages of discovery by um, uh, 1492. Come on, what's his name? Uh, Columbus. Colom. Christopher. Christopher Colom. Yeah. Christopher, yeah, Christopher I have been as far as up here. I've been to, to this section of Spain here. Yes. But this is wow. I mean, it's amazing how many the the, the route and how many pilgrims actually walk that route. How many people you and see walking it? As, and going. as Rusty says, the Apostle Thomas went to the other side to India. So they were like all over the world that know the world. So when they discovered another continent, it was like, now we have to go there to, to preach the gospel over there. And that's why Catholicism is not uh, national. It's not about our community or, or, or only for us. It's to spread it, go over the world and talk about it. Right, yeah, but that was the Great Commission. That was the Great Commission. And that's that why yeah. the Spanish Empire had the, the phrase plus ultra, mas allá, go beyond. Ah, okay, makes sense now. That's a whole culture. Yes. That's in, are you sure this wasn't a Baptist thing? Are you sure it wasn't a, It wasn't something by the non-denominational churches that were doing this? Are you sure it's Catholic? It's Catholic because it was done by the... English yes, by, by the sure Spanish Empire and the twelve Calvinists in the first century. That that's what I'm. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Are you sure it wasn't Jesus and the twelve Calvinists or Jesus and the twelve Baptists in the first century? Because I'm kind of hearing <laughs> stories like that. <laughs> you know, because Jesus says, "I want to make you Calvinists." Did you <laughs> okay, now I get it. <laughs> Yeah, I did a talk on that recently. I called it originally Jesus and the 12 Calvinists, but I changed it to Jesus and the 12 Gnostics. 
because what I've been discovering is that in all of the claims from the 16th to the 18th century in Europe to the apostolicity of the Protestant movement, every single one of the Protestant denominations, or technically they call themselves branches or denominations, but in, in fact, they are schisms. The correct term is these are yes. schisms. Every single one of these groups identifies themselves as apostolic by, by directly going through major heresies, directly through anti-Christian heresies, which is an insane choice. And the, the Baptist churches are the most egregious of those that make the claims. But yes. they go through the Albigensians, the Cathars, and, and other crazy groups that are no, yeah. not remotely Christian. And it's insane. No, uh, uh, there are only uh, very few churches that has the apostolic uh, succession. Uh, the Orthodox, for example, the Orthodox, they do have the apostolic succession by Andrew. That was... Um, the brother of Peter, so uh, the Catholic and Orthodox are brothers, even between their apostles, even right. between their heads. Yeah, you know, there's that whole debate of whether Christopher Columbus was a was a Spanish citizen or a Port Portuguese citizen. Was he from Portugal or was he from Spain? Because I've seen this this whole debate about. That. In fact, uh, most uh, well-approved theory is that he was from uh, Genova. From so Portuguese? No, Italy. Italy. <laughs> Italy, Genova. Yes. <laughs> okay. So why didn't he? So why is there such a such a question about this? There is a lot of mystery between. Uh, uh, Christopher Columbus early days. We know very little. That is something also very weird about a person that lived in the 15th century because we know much more about people that lived even before Christ than uh, Christopher yeah. Columbus himself. Well, I mean, look, well, for instance, the fact that he was alive is a mystery because we know the Catholic Church killed everybody. They killed 50 million people. <laughs> How was anyone alive at that time? <laughs> you know, that's, that's that's the Spanish Inquisition left everyone dead. <laughs> yes, of course. Even even they killed more people that existed. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> correct. So... Well, they, they they say that the Spanish Inquisition killed like ten million witches in Europe. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All of Europe was uh, every woman in Europe <laughs> were, was a witch. <laughs> yeah, I know it's crazy. I mean, even very famous atheists have I've seen them make that claim, and it's it's you're like, okay, guys. I mean, seriously, go go back to school. I have a question here before we go on to the the topic because um, I think we've answered the question about North America. Um, there was this question which I was interested in. Um, also, on your interview, we should all know our history. We do not know much about the Incas, what they did or how they organized themselves to live. What we have is hollow pride. We should fill that void with the knowledge of our past and our rich culture. Can you tell me more about that? And then yes. I'll leave it open to you again to continue where you want. Yes, uh, we have uh, uh, the knowledge that we have about uh, pre-Hispanic times, the Incas, the Aztecs, is more based on myths or ideology than real facts and uh, uh, this was uh, corroborated also by historians that told me that 90 percent of our history is still underground we have not uh, excavated or discovered it so um, uh, the the worst part of attaching to a myth is that we do not research for what really happened mm -hmm. and maybe when uh, we look we look for what really happened we're going to be really really surprised uh, for example i have uh, another uh, uh, images or pictures around here that uh, i don't want to miss and uh, uh, that will be very uh very enlightening for all of us 
here for example we have and i'm, uh, I'm sharing it, um, it hasn't come up on my side yet okay there it comes yeah okay the, this is painted in cusco we have the virgin mary Just zoom and in a little bit. at her feet of virgin mary at her feet we have catholic incas oh wow i i have seen such pictures before and i never made the connection because it's so odd yes yes we don't know about that and today we're told that the incas worshipped the land the mother earth pachamama or whatever you can call it but we're never told that the, the incas converted to christianism and uh, worshipped uh, Jesus, that uh, they uh, also uh, have been portrayed in uh, the in Corpus Christi, for example. No, we're we're going to so see. That's a good question. Why why has the Pope emphasized the Pachamama and not the Catholic tradition I don't of understand. South America? Well, why not that understand. instead and talk about the rich? historical Catholic I, I would community. love to see for example this uh, this okay okay I'll share that in a second let's go yep yeah I don't know this how is... I, I've, this is the first time I'm using this software for an interview um, I normally <laughs> no use problem. OBS and I have no idea how to give you auto sharing rights <laughs> I have no, no there's idea. no way to there's no way to auto share i have yeah. you have to you have to put the image well this is corpus christi you see all right this is a corpus christi procession and at the side you have indians that <gasps> are attending to the procession and look at which flag do they have the cross of Saint Andrew. Ah, interesting. And you have also the Saint, no, Saint uh, Saint uh, Christopher and uh, Virgin Mary. And uh, there is a tradition in Cusco until today that the Corpus Christi is beautiful in Cusco. If uh, I'm, I'm going to share also some uh, images. Have a Villainous yes. says here, the Pope Pachamama controversy is fake. It's an Inca statue of Mary. Is that true? Ah, okay. About that, no, it's not an Inca statue. Uh, it maybe it I, it could be a Masonic statue because uh, this this synod was uh, the Masonic synod. So well. But uh, uh, as I said, also the the Masonians didn't uh, had anything to do with Pachamama. So, <laughs> but uh, I would love to see this image that has been uh, for forget. No, we we don't. Yeah, it I mean was this, this history that you're showing time. us. I mean this is incredible. It's it's really eye opening. And for, why don't we know this? And why is this not emphasized? I would love to see this history emphasized. I would love to see this image instead of uh, Pachamama or whatever it is. This is uh, the uh, child Jesus dressed as an Inca. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and you see, they dressed as the the previous Can you zoom pictures in a little bit? Because many they... people are on their cell phones, so it helps to zoom in so they can see it on their phones. I yes, have two yes. big screens, which helps me a lot. But I also have my phone usually in front of me, and I try to see how it looks on my phone. So I, I make all the text as big as I can. I make all the pictures as big as I can. But that's great. That's a bit too big, but wow. You can zoom out it a little bit, but that's amazing. This uh, crown yeah. with the red uh, on the... Tassels, the front. Yeah, on the front yeah. Yes, that's the Inca crown. So he was crowned with the with the crown of the Incas. It is called Mascapaicha. OK, 
Okay, so the Incas regarded him also as Jesus. I mean, he was yes. part of their tradition. And wow. Of course, of course. Wow. I didn't know, I didn't, well, I, I'm not Catholic, but all the same, I didn't know any of this. They, it, most Peruvians didn't know any of this. So uh, I, I can't blame you. And that's why I say that we should know better our history, but uh, with facts, not with uh, ideology or politics. And thank you again, Matthew Velasquez. I'm really grateful. I'm I'm going to be using these funds as a small point. Um, everyone's I, I know that everyone's been saying they would love for me to read these narrations for these articles that I've created. Um, but it is it is really time consuming and very difficult to edit when you have to edit when you have to narrate edit and you know you've got to cut out breathing voices and and dogs barking and motorbikes and, and sirens and it's and kitchen noises it's it's really it's so much easier to just put it into a high quality AI so I I mean notice I've published something like 59 videos in the last 30 days I mean that's that's a lot of content. I've published hours and hours, which I could never do if I was doing it manually. Um, so I, I'm just trying to get out. I have a backlog of content I've researched and I just want to get it out and this is the easiest. And if I'm going to try and do Spanish versions, then I'm gonna need to have software that will do this. So I will try and take these funds and apply it to that task and try and identify videos that would be good for a Spanish audience and put that out. So so these are things that, I, and I appreciate the support for that because. I'm using tools that, that cost money. I'm, I'm spending hundreds of dollars a year right now on subscriptions. As you know, you've got to pay for Office. You've got to pay for this, pay for that, pay for this, pay for that. You know, editing software, um, you've got to pay for subscriptions to everything these days. So I do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, but to Dirty Windshield, to Yaya and Matthew Velasquez, thank you very much. I'm super grateful. Thank you. Um, so yeah, back to you, Capitan Peru. Yes, I, I want to take two comments over here. One of sure, them sure. is saying... Uh, um, no, this Inca culture is still. Oh, I, I will begin with that. I have to say that my, of that traditional Inca culture, there were the most dangerous and savage of ancient New World civilizations. It was the contrary. The Incas uh, banned, forbid cannibalism because they saw it as something oh. very strange. And they also restrained uh, sacri human sacrifices. They, they, were, they had a very sophisticated thinking, and that's why Inca Garcilaso de la Vega wrote in his chronicles that Incas prepared the path for Christianism, exactly like the pagan Rome prepared the path for the arrival of Christianism. Okay, that is... You know, why didn't I know this? I am what Nicodemus is saying here. I thought the same thing. You know? <laughs> Everybody thinks the same thing. I mean, it's just how have we learned this false history? I mean, look, certainly there would have been some degree of these things, clearly, but this has been overhyped. And the, what I always find within the history is that the Christian aspect, the, the civilizing aspect of Christian doctrine is always undermined, hidden, and distorted or forgotten. And it's yes. just constant. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, the documentary. I don't know where it is with subtitles. Sorry. Uh, I don't know if you can activate subtitles. Uh, or of, I, I, I'm going to ask the director because I have his... You know contact. him. Yes, I know the director. It, because wow. because I, I, okay, I'm going to give you a premium, premium news. Uh, when the director contact me because he wants to do the second part. Congratulations, nice. The second part is called Hispano America, Hispano America. And uh, it has been filmed in Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, Mexico, and Texas. Mm. And it will have a chapter from the, the Spanish US. Very interesting. Okay, very. Do you think he would mind if I 
if I generated a transcript into English or even maybe dubbed it into English, do you think you would mind? I'm going to tell him. Because I can probably try and do it with software. I can probably, it will probably cost some money, but I believe it might be possible for me to, to, to do a very good English translation of the Spanish. I can try. And then maybe I can put that on my channel for people to watch or something. Um, yeah. Okay. We're back. Yeah. Oh, you disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying I, I can probably create a dub or or transcript in English, and maybe you, you think you would mind if we did that. I'm going to tell him, but I'm sure he will have no problem. Because I'm trying to to do history now. I'm trying to do history and to show people that there's a different view of history, and I and I'm very detailed with my sources. I. I I provide my sources where I can. I give them copies in PDF or as documents. And um, and I'm showing the reasons why I have the views that I have based on the evidence that I've provided and what history has left out. And I think we need to reclaim our history. And, um, you know, this is this is great. I would love to be able to, to help. I mean, you, South America also needs to recover its history, just like Europe needs to recover. I don't want to keep you longer than you have to. Do you need to go soon? No, I, I want to I want to also talk about one uh, more comment. Okay, thank you. That Jerry. is, uh, um, it, it, it said uh, that notice Inca culture is still there, but uh, there are no Christians. Inca culture, sorry? Yes, it's just above the super sticker. Which, hold on, super sticker. Ah, there we go, yeah, from Villainous. Okay, and uh, um, I want to share uh, images of Corpus Christi procession in Cusco. Okay. And thank you again, Derek Sizemore. I'm very grateful. We'll get back to you. Just keep following the channel, and I'll update you as soon as I hear back from Rafael about that. You can see Corpus Christi is massive. There's a lot of people with, oh, I think, okay, a lot of people in the procession. The, uh, the square is full and uh, there are a lot of scents and uh, there's a, a great devotion. And uh, so, yes, it's true. The, it's Lima, the, right? No, Cusco. Cusco, Cusco sorry. Uh, the sorry. capital of the Incas. Ah, okay, yes, yes, yes. Capital of the Inca Empire. Ah, of course, you it see? says on the, on the screen, it says Cusco. What was I thinking? I should have just checked. Yeah. So, yes, their descendants are uh, exist and, and are Catholic. And they have a lot of devotion in their festivities. So, that comment is, is very true. Incas and their descendants... They live until today, and they are deeply devoted Christians. Okay, yeah. Nice. You know, I went to Spain. I went to, what's that city um, west of, it's east of Toledo. I went to Toledo, and it was amazing. I went to the cathedral. It is an incredible Yes. Oof. It yes. is just and the city on a hill. It is just amazing. It's and beautiful. The cathedral. I mean, I need to go back. I just 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 to do a tour. It was an incredible experience. I mean, the history, the the just the feeling of being in that place. Um, no, you know, that's so, kind of similar to what I saw there. It's just, yeah. Toledo is like uh, going to a middle age town with all the castles and the swords and uh, toilet and iron. No. It's yeah. uh, You've very been well known. Yes, I have been in Toledo. And uh, uh, for example, I am uh, looking that there is a person commenting that is called Dragon Daenerys. I suppose it's a Game of Thrones fan. And uh, I will tell him that the her, Va her. Valyr <laughs> Valyrian Iron is inspired on Toledan Iron. Ah, okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, actually, you're right. The Toledo steel yes. with that fancy. The, yes. I mean, the, I couldn't. I couldn't it's buy one. Tole, it's a Tole, it's taller than the steel. But yes. when you see the Toledo steel, they've got that fancy sort of like I don't know the black lines running through the steel. It looks pretty cool. The best really steel in the world. 
Uh, let me try and find something because I thought of buying something. Uh, what is here? Hold on. Let me see if I can find a picture. Ah, here we go. I'm just going to share this quickly. There we go. So you get this. Um, this is Toledo steel. Yes. Um, but you get this kind of effect. This, you get this kind of effect here. It's just, just amazing. The Yes. But also, yeah, you get this. It's like, I don't know. It's, this isn't exactly what I mean. Toledo steel from Toledo. Hold Let, on, Toledo from... steel short, shorts. No, knives not. Shorts. Swords, okay, because when I was there, I was watching, I was looking at swords. Okay, we're going to do swords, because I was watch, I was looking at knives, and they had this, I mean, just, just incredible to look at. I mean, they, you know, cost a small fortune. Yes, that was all beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Yeah, but that little effect through the steel, this black, this this, this black sort yes. of wavy line, it, it is a, I'm not seeing it here, it's, but it was amazing. Yes, the, the, the best, the best steel there. in the world. Yes. But yeah, okay, so yeah, so yeah, there's this 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 hollow pride. So we so tell me more about this hollow pride idea, and what do you think we should have rather than hollow pride? Yes, uh, uh, hollow pride is like an empty pride without substance. No, we we are pride. We're proud about a myth or a legend or an ideology that was created, but it is unsubstantial. When uh, uh, we have a lot, a lot of uh, motives to be really, really proud of uh, our history, uh, our ancient that history that uh, is full of empires. And uh, part of it, of it has been uh, the Spanish Empire. And uh, I, I'm, I am going to add that uh, maybe that's not the correct name, Spanish Empire. The correct name will be Catholic Empire. Because ah. the kings received the title of Catholic king. Like Isabel the Catholic and Fernando the Catholic kings. So it was the Catholic empire that has been e erased from history. Wow. That is actually, wow. That is a very powerful point. And it, it has been erased from history. The What you have now is the black legend instead. Instead, yes. And thank you again, Derek. Um, it is a lot of work to... Um, as I'm sure Capitan Peru can tell us, it's a huge amount of work to research, to double check, to edit. I mean, man, I sit with a hundred pages and I've got to turn it into PowerPoint slides of maybe, you know, you've got, you start, you start off with 500 pages and you've got to turn it into 50 slides. You understand you have to throw away 90, yes. 95 percent of the material and still retain some coherence. You've got to check it and you've got to turn a pile of words into some to summarize. And it's, it's a lot of effort. I'm working it's on so lot, many yes. things. It's, and to try to be accurate and make no mistakes. I don't know if it's possible to make no mistakes, but to be, to be, what's the word? To be intellectually honest and neutral as much as possible. Sure, I have a bias. Everyone knows that because I'm very public about it, but I have a perspective, but I'm trying to be factual as possible. And it's, it's really hard work to do this. And, I have other things I want to finish, but I will do the Spanish Inquisition probably next year. But I have I have a pile of research that is going to upset all the right people. Uh, yes, Rafael, back to you. No, oh, and uh, you will have a lot more material if uh, you research about the history of the Catholic Empire in the US. And uh, you will find that everything connects. Yeah, and, well, uh, we didn't know about this. I think everyone on the stream uh, is completely shocked. We have just under 60 people, I think, right now. Um, you know, I, I should have maybe advertised this. The thing is, we di remember, I, we didn't really decide what the topic was. So, guys, just so you know, we weren't clear on the topic. We were just, you know, I, I thought we were going to do something completely talking different. Talking talking talking. Talking. So we ended up doing something we didn't plan <laughs> so we're actually i mean it's gone very well but we're doing a completely different topic than what i was intending to do so uh, so yeah 
Um, yeah, so I, we should have maybe you know been clearer, but but hopefully, hope would you be willing to do this again, Rafael? Yes, of course, I would love to. Yeah, I mean, this is very. I mean, I'm I am so surprised, and uh, it fits in with everything else that I found. But this is all so much is new to me. So much is, I mean, what? Why do you think people would want to hide the Christian nature of civilization? Well, because they are anti-civilization, and uh, there are a lot of examples about, about this. Uh, well, we can see that today in uh, our post-modern society, uh, but uh, you can see it also in the in the, in the society today for example when there were the riots you know the protests and uh, everything about this in the in the us one of the statues that was rioted was from san junipero of serra okay. that was the saint that uh, uh, that uh, announced the gospel in uh, in North America, and uh, he was uh, very. He had a lot of charity with the Indians. He helped a lot of Indians, but today, the his statue was vandalized. I don't know why. Okay, that person is a, literally a saint. <laughs> He uh, uh, de devoted his life to God and to help the Indians, but his statue was vandalized. When uh, you have the statue of uh, other people, for example, Custer, that killed a lot of Indians, and nobody touched him, and they they preferred to vandalize the statue of uh, San Junipero of Serra. Okay, that's wow. Yeah, uh, there was a question that that came in. I just said I don't know if this does this make any sense to you from Makumuris. I'm not sure if that's a serious question or not. It means nothing to me. Okay, this okay. It says what's up, Peru? I don't know what is Swardi. Yeah, neither do I. So okay, uh, please rephrase. But that Peru to... was a kingdom, the kingdom of Peru. Peru. Yes. All right. Yeah, now I know about the California missions. I'm aware of that. That. I, I've taken the train once along the coastline of California uh, for for like six hours or something. I did a very long train ride, and there's so many Spanish missions on the west coast of America along the coastline. Yes, line. the California missions. Uh, you can uh, you can look for it on the, on Google, and uh, you can see the statue of Saint Junipero Serra with inscriptions that says racist, a person that devoted his life to help and to and, and, and to guard what which yeah, explanation do you so Junipero of Serra. Okay, that's the statue. Uh, hold on, let me just share this. Um, his the stage, statue, share mine quickly, and then I'll show you his, in a moment. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm sharing yours now. Yeah. No murderer. He never wow. killed a person in his life. Uh, he is... he protected the Indians. This is in Los Angeles. I mean, come on. Of yes, course. come mean, on. You're talking about woke central. No, you 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 see in in all his studies, he's protecting an Indian because oh, he wow. devoted his life to protect the Indians, and uh, he has inscriptions like racist murderer. Things with nonsense. So how yeah. can you explain this? And the yeah. real murderers, like uh, Kuster, and uh, they they were not touched. Look look at this. Yeah, I know. Shocking. Shocking. Beheaded. It's anti-Christian. I mean, it's very very much. It's and people have been a false view of Christianity. They don't realize its civilizing influence and how it changed the world. There's this question from Derek. Do you think the Ottoman Empire occupation of Spain is a major reason for a lot of the lies? Islam was fomenting revolutions, weren't they? 
I mean, certainly in Eastern Europe, they seem to have a hand that has not been acknowledged fully by historians. It's known, but it's not something, I mean, they were very much instrumental as a hand behind the Protestant revolution. They were it, funding, they were arming, they were training, they were, of, yes. they were colluding with the Protestants, especially in Eastern Europe. And also they were creating these schisms like the Unitarian Church, which is like a vague Chrislam, you know, it's like, you know, changing Christianity to be more Islamic, pushing it in that direction. They were certainly behind some of those. Things. Yes. And, uh, well, also French Revolution, I think, has a huge, huge part of the uh, blame. Yeah, I covered the French Revolution in detail. I've done a very detailed, yes. that was a disgusting part of history, a really shocking part of history. And, and atheists need to own that as, as an atheist genocide, as the true disgusting genocidal and occult movement yes. that, that it was. And uh, uh, look for the massacre of La Vendée. The massacre of? La Vendée. Oh, yes, no, I covered that. I did yes. the Vendée. I covered that. In La, ah, the Vendée, okay. Yeah, I covered that in detail. I went through the, the one story. Terrible. That really came, yeah. No, I, I went through that. It was the descriptions, the historical descriptions from soldiers of the time of the murders and the just the depravity, how they treated women and babies. And just, I mean, it was rivaled anything that the Russians or the Nazis did. And um, it was a precursor to the, the mindset and how it was actually that the atheist movement then was an anti-Christian movement. It was, in fact, it had the same directive as, as Islam, join us or die. And the goddess reason was enthroned in Notre Dame. Yep, and the stories, yeah, so... Yeah. Oh, the Cristero War also in Mexico. I don't know that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've gone about 90 minutes. I don't want to go too long. I try not okay. to go too long. On yes, channel. we can talk uh, for yeah. two I hours we had more. A different discussion privately, yes. a different topic. And I thought that, but that's another discussion we can also have. And I think history is something that we, that, that we both acknowledge is critical. An understanding of history provides an understanding of reality. And we've been given a false view of Infinite Reach Ministries. Well, thank you very much for subscribing thank to you. the channel. I, I hope I don't, I, I tend to be very confrontational. I do tend to be controversial. I tend to be blunt. And I hope I hope that doesn't offend too many people, but I, I'm just dealing with facts and I'm putting them out and I follow where the evidence goes. And I hope not to upset people, but, but you know, Jesus actually upset a lot of people. That's why they killed him. So... <laughs> So, yeah. Yes, uh, and uh, also don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Capitan Peru, in, in YouTube, in Facebook, in Instagram also, in TikTok recently. Yeah, actually, yes. Yeah. So, guys, if you check the description, I have put links to a bio of Rafael, and I've put links to all of his um, all of his social media. So please check in the description for that. It's all in the description box. The whole description box is dedicated to the history and story of Raphael. So you you can see that there. Um, he is on Facebook. He's on YouTube. He's Capitan Peru. And uh, on Instagram, he's Capitan Peruano. Actually, let me just share my screen so you can see that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, as you can see here, I've got a really long uh, write-up of him. And um, you can see all of his social media links that are here. So I've got this very long write-up, and then of course, close that. And I've got all of these um, social media links. Here. Yeah. So Rafael, so so tell us where uh, people can find you and what and what they can learn from you. Yes. Yeah, so well, um, uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, TikTok, uh, as Capitan Peru, and. Uh, uh, I, I will talk much more about uh, the, the topics that we're talking about in uh, this program about the Spanish Empire, the Catholic Empire, about uh, the real history, about, uh, well, Inquisition, conquest, our Hispanic Catholic roots that has been forgotten since so much time. So if you don't want you if you want to learn more about that, well, subscribe, join, and I hope you see I see you there. Yeah, and you you do your channel in Spanish, correct? Yes, my channel is in Spanish, 
So if, if you speak Spanish, uh, you will feel much more comfort. I think that YouTube has the option to have English subtitles, but uh, yeah. Yeah, you will be much more comfortable. Videos. Um, but I will certainly investigate. Now that I have the funding, I can look at doing the dubbing because I've got a service that, that is not cheap, but it, it does very professional. Um, I'm impressed with the quality of the voices you with these, I think you can't tell the difference. And I want to start to maybe do some Spanish dubbing and, and experiment. The technology is only getting better <laughs> right now. So, and I'm able to at least get through the backlog of written content. People will be surprised how much written material. I have hundreds, hundreds of pages of written material that I've, I finally, because the, the AI allows me to do this, I can just edit it, get it out and just publish. So. <laughs> Because there's so many things I want to get out, so many ideas I want to explore, and I can finally do this because now I have the funding and I have the technology to do it that I could never do on my own. That's just yeah. So, what is your next project before we go? So, what's your next project? What can people look forward to from you? And I mean, I, I'll be I'd love to set a date with you when we'll, we'll advertise it like a week in advance at least. To do another talk. But what are you currently busy with? What's well, uh, yes, I'm uh, writing books. I have a couple of books that. Uh, are already written but still not published. I hope that in one moment I can publish my books in the US. So if there is somebody interesting, interested in uh, publishing about uh, uh, the... Oh, you just froze up there, you just broke up there. Uh, Capitan Peru, Rafael. I uh, guess looks like Rafael has. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're back. back. You're yes. just back. Yeah. You were saying yes. you'd love to, to just go back to if someone can help you publish your book, just please repeat that. Yes. I, I have already published in Peru. I have published in Spain. And uh, if there's somebody interested about publishing uh, this uh, history, in the US, well, contact me and I will be very glad to do it. I know someone who is a Catholic based in Canada. He has a YouTube channel and, uh, you know, I, I know there are these uh, arguments amongst Catholics, but all that aside, uh, I try to be on good terms with people where I can. Um, but he has published several successful books. He once had the Catholic and religious bestseller on Amazon, I believe. And he has said to me that should I write? And everyone tells me I need to write books. Everybody tells me this uh, because I've put out so much material on different topics. But he said he can help me with self-publishing on Amazon and other places because he's been successful at this. As I said, like he had the, the religious bestseller. So I could put you in touch with him and he can maybe advise you how he does it because he's been successful. That would, be, that would be great, yes. Yeah, I'll put you in touch with it. With him, um, I'm actually having a. I'm actually have a call with him. I've been doing a show with him on Wednesday, on the fifteenth. Actually, I'm doing a talk with him, so I will chat to him beforehand. And and um, so next week, I will have a talk with him and then put you guys in touch um, about how he can maybe advise you and help you. He's very busy because he's, you know, that's his income and stuff. So I'll have you two talk, and he can maybe teach you how he did it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cool. So guys, yeah, thank you. That's it from me. Any any final words from you, Capitan Peru? I mean, I'm very grateful you did this. I just uh, just uh, uh, one last advice. Research, research for yourself. Don't believe everything you hear, especially from mass media. And uh, as I always say, say when uh, the system wants us to to be ignorant there's no greater revolution than to study than to study than to study yes excellent yeah when the system yeah. wants us ignorant there's no more greater revolution than studying all right yeah no exactly so guys do your homework homework is important it's work but it's important um, our aim is to get to the facts, and from the facts, we can find the truth. So, um, you know, this, yeah, the, the, 
the word truth can sometimes be very fuzzy, but the facts are the facts. So let's find the facts, let the facts lead us to the truth. And um, yeah, and that's it for me. So yeah, thank you, Raphael, for your time. Thank so you. guys, Raphael Aita, long bio in the description, all of his links, please go to his channel, sign up, buy his books and uh, read his articles and watch his videos. So thank you guys. And if you do like this, please like, share, subscribe, let your friends know. And thank you again for the support. I really do appreciate it. And I will be back with you guys soon. Have a wonderful night. God bless. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much.